uh, there is a, a praise uh, saying that everything that has breath, praise to the Lord. So, uh, this is what's coming up to my uh, mind. So, um, so as a worshiper to the Lord, so, uh, please stand up, please rise up, and let's go to the praise to our Lord.
Father, bless this congregation, this nation, and your body here on earth. Stretch out your hand and let the people of Ukraine live in peace and not in the crossfires and rubble of war. Let them live in joy and not huddle in fear. Bring forth the day as stated in Isaiah when he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Bring forth the day for Ukrainians when you will state, as you did to the ancient Israelites, I will remove all weapons of war from the land, all swords and bows, so that you can live in peace and safety. Give nation's leaders the wisdom, discernment, and compassion they need to end this bloody conflict and usher in an age of global peace. Christ said, 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So let the day of the peacemakers come quickly. Also, with your guidance, let them ensure peace on the Korean Peninsula so that its people may continue to live and prosper. Let the Holy Spirit provide all of humanity with divine guidance and heal any damaging divisions in our lives and between our nations. We pray all this in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who we thank for his saving grace. Amen. 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 Uh, let's say hello to each other, one another. It's great to each other. We are together. Okay, okay. <laughs> we are together again. Just praising the Lord. Changing that to 10? Yeah, okay, uh, yes. It says 10. It, we've changed the, the time uh, to 10 o'clock uh, Saturday mornings. 10 o'clock Saturday mornings. So uh, let us know if you want to join and we can provide you with a Zoom link. если долго стоят на границе, там родственник военный очень переживают. Много людей с детками, они не знают, как дальше им, куда быть, ну, куда поехать, как быть вообще в этой ситуации. Многие вообще никогда не выезжали за границу Украины, для них это большой стресс и большой шок.
believe you guys all will know uh, what is going on in Ukraine. Um, when South Korea was having war with uh, North Korea, we could uh, protect our country because people from other countries helped us. And even after the war, uh, we could raise this fast. We could, we could uh, stand up and then uh, raise fast and then we could be uh, top G one of the top GDP country because country from uh, people from other country helped us. And it seems like it is our turn. If you think um, we Christians have to live as a body of Christ and uh, through helping each other, through encouraging each other, please um, feel free to uh, donate uh, to, through the uh, vision offering envelope. Or if you want to help Ukraine, uh, just like uh, Dave said last week, if you talk to Dave, he can uh, send you the link that can uh, connect you directly to the Ukraine bank account. Uh, and if you donate to that Ukraine bank account, uh, people who help uh, pe uh, people in Ukraine will going to use that money for the humanity. So uh, there is two ways that you can do. You can either ask Dave about uh, about the link, or you can do offerings through the vision offerings that uh, uh, through the envelope that we uh, provided you. Um, today's passage is Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. Let me read this scripture for you. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, a robber, evildoer, auditor, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a, t a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Um, sometimes we forget about the importance of prayer. Uh, can you, would you please uh, turn on the light? Yes, thank you. Sometimes we forget about the importance of prayer. Um, for some uh, some believers in other religions, they they think uh, that the prayer is like a um, magic spell that can make their wish come true. And that's how uh, people in this around this world believe uh, so. They, they um, think of prayer as a magic spell that can um, that they can use to, to ask God whatever they want and that can make their wish come true. But for a Christian, a prayer is more than just a magic spell. It is more than that. Because for Christians, prayer works as a connecting link between God and us. It is a tool to invite God into our situation, our lives, through communicating with God. So prayer is like a communication, having a conversation with God. So prayer does not, just, just like, as we all know how we, like how to communicate with others, prayer does not always have to be done by bowing head, knee down, closing eyes, and gathering hand. I mean, this is what we learned during the Sunday school, and I'm not saying that it is, uh, it is a bad thing. Like bowing down uh, and need um, need down, gathering in and closing eyes. So that is that is good practice for prayer. But prayer does not only have to be done like this. It could be happen anytime in any place. Um, I work at the Christian school, and uh, the president is pastor in that school, and then uh, he 
teach, he teaches uh, his students to uh, cry out when they, when they pray and shout uh, Lord three times before they pray. And it is one of the Korean culture that we have, like shouting Lord three times, Jia, 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 and then pray. Uh, and because I didn't learn uh, how to pray in Korea, I'm, I was not really used to that. So I just prayed quietly uh, at, behind. And then pastor told me to pray, uh, cry out. Uh, and then, and then I, so I said, oh, God hears me even though I pray silently. Um, Prayer is the just again. Prayer is communicating with God. It, it is communication with God, so it can be done anytime, any place, in uh, any um, uh, through any kind of prayer. If it is just any kind of repentance, confession, giving thanks, or asking God what you want through communicating with God, then that is prayer. Therefore, for Christians, prayer is not something that we just say in church, that we just do in church. Or it does not only have to be a representative prayer or Lord's prayer that we recite here, uh, together here in church. But prayer can be done in any place, in any time. So, in other words, prayer is life of Christians. And today's in today's passage, Jesus tells us about... Uh, tell, tells us a, a parable, and in this parable, he um, he mentions two people, and these two people, two different kind of people, pray to God, and then through this parable, Jesus clearly discerns what is the prayer that pleases God and what is the prayer that does not please God. So through today's uh, so through to looking at today's passage together, I am hoping for us to learn then how we have to pray, and since prayer is our life, how do we Christians have to live our life, and what kind of mind or heart do we have to have when we live Christian life? Um, again, Jesus explained about the different kind of prayer. The prayer that pleases God and prayer that does not please God through the parable in today's passage. And in today's passage, two people, we can see two people praying to God. And one is Pharisee and one is tax collector. And in order to know about their prayer, we first have to know who they are first during this time. First, Pharisee was one of the religious leaders at this time. Um, during, uh, during this time, religious took uh, many parts of Jewish, uh, Jewish life. So, uh, real Christianity, believing in God, and following the law was a big deal for Jews. And Pharisees were the religious leader, the one uh, who uh, used to teach or lead those Jews uh, to follow the law and uh, believe in God. And this tax collector was almost like a betrayer of the country. Because during that time, Israel was, co uh, was conquered by uh, Roman, Rome, uh, <coughs> Roman soldiers. And then uh, tax collectors were the one who worked for those Roman soldiers. They were the one who get tribute from Jews and give the, that tribute, the tax, to uh, Roman soldiers. So they, people, Jews, they treated tax collector as a betrayer of the country. But let's take a look at uh, verse 14 again. Jesus says like this, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And in verse 4, this man, it says, I tell you that this man, and this man symbolizes the tax collector. And it says, I tell you that this man rather than the other, and the other is symbolized Pharisees. This man. Uh, in other words, Jesus is telling that the prayer of Pharise uh, the tax collector was better prayer than the prayer of Pharisees. Then let's take a look to uh, Pharisees' prayer again. 
It says like this. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like the others, robber, evildoers, other terror, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I can. And Jesus said, this is not the prayer that can please God. And he even tells the reason in verse 14. He says, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Pharisee was not humble at all. When he was praying, he was not humble at all. He prayed as he is very righteous before the most righteous God. Uh, among all my high school friends, uh, there there's a one guy who got hired from a Samsung company. Whenever we hang out, other uh, me and my other friends hang out with him, he always brag about that. He always uh, brag. He always tell us how much benefit he gets and how much salary he gets from that company. But there is one another guy who, uh, who's friend of mine. He who made t tons of money through investing on real estate. If that guy join us, then the one who got hired from Samsung company does not talk about his uh, his salary anymore. He does not talk about uh, his salary or income anymore. That is because he knows the gap between him and the guy who invest on the real estate. He also knows that it, if he brag about his income if he, uh, in front of that uh, guy who made tons of money through investing on the real estate, it will make himself shameful. The friends who got hired from Samsung company could brag in front of his friends because he thought that all his friends got a job from the company that is lower level than the Samsung company. It is the same for a Pharisee. If Pharisee really, Pharisee really knew and felt the gap between God and himself, he would not even try to say that he is righteous before God, because he would not have, <clears throat> because he would have known that it will make himself shameful. In other words, this Pharisee did not have knowledge about God. He did not know about God. Um, genuine prayer cannot be done if we do not have knowledge about God. Again, prayer is communication, is conversation uh, between God and us. But think about this. Um, uh, when I when I was in college, uh, I uh, I went to, I went to college in um, in a Sioux Center in Iowa State. And I'm not sure uh, about the Iowa State, but the reason where I lived in the Iowa State, they kind of have a culture that press, uh, uh, that gives pressure uh, to college students that they have to get married uh, right after they graduate the college. Maybe that is why I got married uh, earlier, <laughs> earlier compared to other Koreans. Uh, like so, like. More than 50% of students, they got married right after graduate uh, college. So, like, once they reach senior of the college, they like to, if they don't have boyfriend or girlfriend, they like to have a blind date with someone. But before they go to blind date, they try to get all the information as much as possible about the woman or man that he, is going, he or she is going to meet uh, on the blind date. Because he, because they know that if they have more information about that person, they can lead the conversation better. They can have better conversation, or better uh, communication. And it is same when we have job interview. Uh, a job interview, like when we have job interview, we try to get all the information about that company as much as possible to answer the question better. And it is same. Better prayer comes when we have enough knowledge about God and ourselves. It can be done when we have enough knowledge about God. And John Calvin explained this knowledge of God like this. Knowledge of God is knowledge of ourselves. And knowledge of ourselves 
is the knowledge of God. In other words, as much as we know how high God is, we will know how low we are. And as much as we know how weak we are, we can know how strong God is. And as much as we know how righteous God is, we can know how sinful and weak we are. So no, in other words, knowledge of God let us know the gap between God and us so through letting us know how righteous God is so that we can know about what the grace that filled all the gap between God and us is. And genuine prayer can be done only when we have enough knowledge about God because this knowledge teaches us how we have to treat and communicate with God. This knowledge teaches us to be humble before God and it teaches us to submit everything before God when we come before God and pray to God. The Pharisee did not have enough knowledge about God, so he thought he is righteous enough to stand before God and say that he, can, he, he is righteous. But this tax collector was different. This tax collector had full knowledge about God and himself. That was why he prayed for his weakness and submitted everything before God and repent and ask for mercy. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says like this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy, Spirit, Holy One is understanding. Church, when we pray and when we want to do genuine prayer, we at least we have to at least be aware of that to whom we are praying. Church, when we pray, we pray to the most high God. So church, we have when we pray, we first have to know who God is and know who we are and humble ourselves and submit everything before God. Then uh, let's take a look at uh, look at the tax collector's prayer. Verse 13 says, But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. This is what the uh, tax collector did. He stood some distance away and was even unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven. In this sense, we can see that this tax collector was humble and he knew he had full knowledge about God and himself. Um, and this is what actually uh, what our forefather in faith did. If you see the Old Testament, if you see all the characters, characters in the Old Testament, um, they had knowledge of, of God. So they thought that they would die if they faced God. So whenever God came to them, what they did was lying down before God and try not to face God. And they even say that, God, please go away. This place is dirty. They did not even try to face God because they were in awe of God. The tax collector was be in awe of God. Church, when we stand before God, when we come to God, we have to be in awe of God. But it does not mean that we need to get away from God and not treating as our uh, not treating God as our Father. Um, loving God uh, and being in awe of God might sound like it is contradict each other, but actually there is connection between two between these two things. Because when you are in awe of God and realize the gap between you and God, you will know the amount of love of God that filled the gap.
And this tax collector continued to pray like this. He beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He repented. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says like this, Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Bible says that Christians in only church could receive the Holy Spirit when they repent and submit everything before God. Church, salvation is transformation. It does not make us, which means it does not make us better person. It does not make us better churchgoer or uh, earnest churchgoer, but it makes us new. Bible says the old has gone and new has come. Transformation through salvation means we can become a new creation, like a totally new thing. It is not becoming a better person. Which means what we have to do is we, that we have to submit everything before God. And we have to lay down everything before God. This tax collector would have a hard time uh, submitting everything to God and then show himself to God. And come out to, God, come out to the light. Because once he come out to the light, he knew that once he come out to the light, God would see how dirty he is. So he had a hard time coming out to God. That was why he stood distant from the Pharisee and could not even lift up, lift up his eyes. But when he came before God, when he came before Jesus, here is the result. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, and realize how sinful he is and how righteous Jesus is. He realized the love of Jesus. And what he did was that he got to show the love to others. Because because he, this tax collector was fully aware of his weakness and thus greatness, he could not want, he did not want to come before God, the light. But again, just like the Nicodemus, when you come before God, when you come out to the light, we will, yes, we have to show all our dirty, dirty things, all our brokenness to Jesus, but the result is that we are going to feel the love of God, and we are going to share the love, um, same love with others. Um, the other problem of Pharisee's prayer was that uh, this Pharisee, um, when he as, as he prayed, he judged this tax collector. Let's take a look at his prayer again. He said. Uh, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like the others, robber, evildoer, other terror, or even like this tax collector. And when he said robber, evildoer, or other terror, he was mentioning that he is keeping all the law, the Ten Commandments. He was talking about the Ten Commandments. And when he talked about the uh, tithe that he is giving as offering, he was talking about the Tenth Commandment. He, in other words, he was saying that, I, I follow all the Tenth Commandments, so I'm righteous. But not this tax collector, because he's a sinner. But church, we have to remember this. All the, ten, all the commandments and all the law in the Old Testament was summed up, well, I mean, <clears throat> Uh, when Jesus came to the earth, he, Jesus summarized all the commandments and the laws in the Old Testament into two greatest commandments, and that is loving our God and loving our neighbor. Uh, we sometimes 
confused between encouraging and judging. Uh, so if we, um, I could find many churches that judges their church members. Like if you do this or that, that is sin. So you have to repent. And if you do this, and if you do not do this, that is sin. So you have to repent. I could I, I, I could see many uh, religious leaders uh, um, who judges people like that, but increase it it's, it might sound very similar to increasing, but the the um, the difference between increasing and judging is that increases contains love, but judging is not. If you do, if you encourage other people to live as a good Christian with the love, yes, that is indeed encouraging. But then, in order to do that, you have to know that person, and you have to get close to that person, and you have to communicate enough to know about that person before you encourage that person. This Pharisee's prayer did not have this love. He was, a, he, in other words, he was judging the tax collector. And during this time, the Pharisee, this Pharisees, this uh, the, uh, Pharisee taught uh, Jews that they can lie to uh, tax collectors because they taught uh, Jews um, that te these tax collectors are sinners that we can just uh, that that we can just treat as, uh, as a sinner. Church, we have to first love God and love our neighbor. And as a cycle, if we truly love God and we will be willing to know more about God, and this knowledge will make us, us to love God more. And just like the Nicodemus, when we realize the love of Jesus, we will get to show this love to the others. And this is where genuine Christian's life starts. And this is the mindset, this is the heart that we have to have when we pray to God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for allowing us to, to pray to you. And then thank you for always listening to our prayer. Lord, please draw close to your truth to let us have knowledge of you. Lord, we want to know more about you. We pray that you may keep teaching us how much you love us and the amount of love that saved us from our brokenness. Lord, we ask you to walk with us everywhere we go and help us to keep your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the offering time. Uh, let us sing. Give thanks to God.
close to this service with Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Save us from our sins.